Hi everyone, uh, my name is Caitlin. Today we're gonna be doing meditation and art. Um, I just wanna apologize for the little bit of a technical difficulty we just had. Um, so first, before we get started, um, I would like to describe um, to you what meditation is and why we're gonna be doing it. Um, so essentially the reason we uh, choose to do meditation is because it's one way to practice mindfulness. And essentially mindfulness is noticing um, what is happening right now, um, like how your body feels, what you see, um, what you can taste and what you smell. So um, basically everything that's going around you and you can just like focus on that and channel in on that um, specific um, thing that's going around. So when we meditate, um, it's a moment of stillness and we can kind of, you know, relax our minds um, and find like a state of peace. Um, and we can calm down, relax, you know, after maybe a crazy day outdoors that you might've had. So if you can, um, I would like you to try and get in a quiet place if possible. Um, even if it's just going into a corner of a room, um, somewhere where you're a little bit more secluded. And I'm not gonna be doing the meditation with you. I'm actually gonna be reading um, the script. So I'm not gonna be actually closing my eyes and doing the deep breaths. Um, I'm just going to be instructing you to do so. Okay, so I'm gonna get our music going. Okay, so I want you to take a few deep breaths in and out. Another, in and out. And now I want you to gently close your eyes and take another breath, in and out. Create an image in your mind of all the details of a safe, peaceful place. With this image in mind, begin to relax your body. Fear creates tension. And to get rid of nightmares, it is important to decrease this tension. Start by noticing where the tension is in your body. Pay close attention to your shoulders, neck, back, hands, and jaws. These are areas where tensions tend to build up. Once you have located the tension in your body, choose one area to relax first. Focus your attention on this area and consciously allow the muscles to relax and soften, becoming loose. Breathe, imagining that your breath brings relax relaxation to this area. Feel the tension leave as you breathe out. Breathe in relaxation and breathe out tension. Keep breathing, letting your breath be slow and regular. Notice that the area you were focusing on is more relaxed than it was before. See how you have the ability to relax your muscles. Feel your muscles relaxing further. Notice your jaws relaxing, becoming loose, your mouth resting comfortably with your teeth slightly apart. Feel your neck and shoulders relaxing and your shoulders getting lower as the muscles give up their hold. Allow your hands to relax, resting 
open, loose, relaxed. Feel your back relax, all the muscles becoming soft and loose. To get rid of nightmares, let's create a positive image to focus on. Imagine that you are at a luxurious resort where you are completely safe and cared for. Your room is spacious, sunny, and comfortable. In this place, you have no worries. There is nothing you need to do. You are here just to relax and take time for yourself. The room you are staying in is very luxurious. You have a large space with everything you need, a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, a living room. Picture being in a large room that is just for relaxation and enjoyment. This room is your own private escape. Here is a warm pool, a soft, comfortable lounge chair, plants, and a large windows. The sun streams through the windows, making the pool sparkle. Take in the scene, imagining this lovely place. Though this room is indoors, the plants and pool create an almost outdoors feel. Through the windows, you can see a beautiful view. Imagine where your resort is located. What do you see outside? Your resort can be anywhere you like, by the ocean, in the mountains, on a golf course, in the desert. Your resort can be anywhere you like. Take the scene, imagining this lovely place. Though this room is indoors, the plants and pool create an almost outdoors feel. The room is warm with the soft breeze created by silent fans. Imagine yourself here in this safe, luxurious, beautiful place. You may see yourself walking toward the pool or sitting in the lounge chair. Here, you can do whatever you wish. I'll pause for one minute. For the next minute, imagine the relaxing things you can do here and create the picture in your mind of your relaxing in this peaceful place. Now, imagine resting on the lounge chair. Feel the sun shining down as you become warm and relaxed. The chair is very soft. And as you recline, laying back and closing your eyes, you feel so at peace. You are so comfortable here. Feel yourself, feel yourself sinking into the lounge chair, sinking deeper into the relaxation. Notice the peaceful thoughts that are filling your mind. See that by focusing on these thoughts, they become stronger, filling your consciousness with peace. The peaceful thoughts are very clear, increasing in clarity as you focus. All other thoughts and concerns are far away right now. As you sleep or relax, your mind can remain in this positive place.
Feel yourself drifting off, filled with peaceful, pleasant thoughts. Beautiful, serene dreams occupy your consciousness. Calm, peace, relaxed. Thoughts that enter your awareness can pass lazily through your mind, like clouds drifting by. You don't need to focus especially on any of them. You are so calm. Allow your thoughts to pass without dwelling on them. You can get rid of nightmares by allowing the negative images and thoughts to leave your mind as they were replaced by the images of the peaceful resort in your imagination. Turn your attention again to the pool and lounge chair you imagined. See this peaceful place just for you. Only pleasant thoughts remain here. This place is a retreat from all stresses and worries. Anytime worried thoughts arise, focus again on the resort, a luxurious, safe place where you can get away from the life stresses, get rid of nightmares, and just relax. See all the details of this place. You can picture yourself enjoying the pool and sun room or having a warm bath in a jacuzzi. Perhaps you imagine getting into a large, soft, comfortable bed and having a nap. Your suite has a variety of things for you to enjoy and it is a place just for you where you can relax. Relax here, resting, enjoying this holiday. Fill your mind with happiness and peace. Take a few deep breaths here. Breathe in and out. Two more times. In and out. Last deep breath, in and out. Now slowly open up your eyes and enter the space or this virtual platform. And right now you might feel a little bit sleepy, um, very relaxed. And that's normal. That means that you really focused um, and you're imagining um, that luxurious place that we were talking about. If you want, if you feel maybe a little bit too sleepy, you can always shake it out. Um, sometimes I like to shake my hands, move my head around um, just to kind of, you know, get back into the moment and um, be aware of my surroundings. So once you feel like you're moving and grooving a little bit, um, we're going to kind of shift over to our art portion. And so in our meditation, um, a lot of um, what I was talking about was nightmares and dreams and how we sometimes it's nice to think of a relaxing place, um, a peaceful place to um, eliminate these nightmares. Um, and essentially, um, our art craft is going to be um, targeting that same idea of finding a peaceful place to get rid of nightmares. So today we're going to be making dream catchers out of paper plates. And a dream catcher is a handmade mobile object um, that was actually used by Native Americans. So um, in their culture, um, they made dream catchers and they would hang it up um, in their teepees. And it's believed that they did that to ensure a good night's sleep. Um, so it's made of a hoop and strands that are woven um, in kind of a sort of web uh, figure. And they would use natural materials like feathers, crystals, and beads. And also the legend associated is that the nightmares get trapped in that web and while the good dreams pass through the holes. 
And when daylight comes, bad dreams are dissolved. And therefore, um, usually a homemade dream catcher, which we're gonna be doing, is often used to help um, people um, or you guys um, go to sleep and feel more comfortable and not fearful of any nightmares that you might be having. So yeah, so basically that's what a dream catcher is. And even if you don't really want it, um, for the fact that it might help you sleep, um, it also can look as a really, really cool decoration in your room. So you can make it look however you want. Um, some of the materials that I mentioned where you could use feathers, string, um, and beads, or crystals, um, really any material that you have um, could potentially work for this. Um, so to start, um, I have paper plates. You might need your parents to help you with this part. It can be a little tricky because you're going to be cutting um, the circle part, the smaller circle of the big circle. It's a little difficult to see. So I'm going to be cutting around here and you need two paper plates for this part. So it's important that you have two because we're going to end up gluing them together in the end. So I'm going to begin cutting. And the reason you might need help is I personally, when I'm trying to get the middle of a paper, I like to make a hole first. So I'll show you guys. Let's see. So that's how I make my hole. It's really up to you. Um, whatever you find to be easiest. My paper plate is kind of thick. That's why I did it like that. Um, another way to do this is if you have like a sharp knife, again, I would recommend um, your parents helping you out with that part. I'm just cutting out the middle and it's okay if it's not a fully perfect circle because we're gonna be painting and putting string around it. So this is my first plate. As you can tell, it's not totally perfect, but that's okay. Um, it's really hard to get a perfect circle when you're using scissors. Um, so however you can get creative in cutting it, um, really whatever works. Also, um, I'm personally not the best cutter, so that might be why my circle is not perfect, but again, not the end of the world. So I'm just doing my second plate. This one does not look as great compared to the other one. So let's see what we can do. So I have my two plates. Um, to look at their sizing and compare them, I'm going to stack them kind of like this. So you can see that the edges around it are definitely not perfect. So I'm just going to try and cut where it's uneven to see if I can make it a little bit more even. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how my plates came out. So now, 
it's time for the fun part. So that's the cutting is definitely the hardest part of this activity. So I'm actually going to put back on our relaxing music because personally, when I like to paint, I like to have a little background music. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So for this part, you could use markers. Um, I'm personally choosing to use paint because I want it to look a little bit more of a thicker layer of the color. And the paint I have is acrylic, so it does dry a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna use purple paint. And so the rounded portion of your plate, of one of your plates is gonna be on the outside. So you're gonna wanna paint this, and then you're gonna wanna paint um, the caved in part of the other plate. So I'll show you as I go on, it will make more sense. Um, so this is the rounded part. So I'm gonna paint that. If you are worried you're gonna paint the wrong side, you could always paint both. Um, but just to save time, I'm just painting the sides that I need to paint and will be shown. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm painting. So this is kind of a light purple, it's like a lilac. So the thing about making a dream catcher is it can be a little time consuming depending on the materials you're using. So if you need to take a break and come back to this activity, and if you think of something else, like another material that you have in your house, you can always go grab that and add it. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you're gonna wanna use feathers, yarn, really any type of string. But if you're gonna use any material, you definitely will have to use string to make your web. Or if you get creative and think of something else. Also, my paper plate is pretty big. They do sell, or you might have in your house, um, smaller paper plates. sure you put something underneath your paper plate. I have um, paper underneath. Okay, it's almost fully covered in paint. I'm kind of okay if the edges aren't fully covered because I've mentioned that there's going to be string on the bottom. So I'm gonna let this paint 
let this plate, not paint, uh, dry. It should probably take maybe a minute. And in the meantime, I'm gonna paint my second plate. So before I did the rounded edge and now I'm doing the caved in edge. And I'm choosing the same color. You could also do a different color if you'd like, totally up to you. And I forgot to show you guys what I'm actually doing. So I'm still painting. So I said you could paint it a different color, but another way to incorporate different colors is through um, the next part, which we're gonna be doing, which is the different, uh, which would be the web or the string that hangs down from a dream catcher. So if you have different colored string, I'd recommend that if you wanna have, include different colors in your dream catcher. Just get a little bit more paint and then I should be done. So, so the, the rounded edge, which is this plate, not the, yes, the caved in edge. Um, I personally don't care about it as much because it's gonna be the back. So the only reason someone, like if you're hanging it up in your wall, you wouldn't see it, but if you're gonna be holding it up or if it's like dangling and you can see the front and back, then someone would see the side. So that's why I personally chose to paint that. Okay, so my other plate is relatively dry, so I'm okay with it. So now, not the purple side, the white side. So I'm gonna put my paper plate down and I'm gonna be working on the white side of the plate. So now we're all done with painting, coloring, all of that stuff. So this is the fun part. It's where we can kind of start decorating. So as I mentioned, um, dream catchers have a web. So it looks kind of like a spider web. And in order to create that web, I'm gonna be using a uh, string. This is uh, like friendship bracelet string, so it's a little bit smaller. But I also have um, yarn, which I'm gonna be using to hang down from the dream catcher. So it's fun to kind of, um, you know, experiment with different materials and different like thickness of string to see the result that comes out. So for this part, let me show you guys. So you have two ends of your string. I already cut my string just to save us a little bit of time, but my end is a little long, so I'm just gonna cut that. Um, okay, so for this part, I recommend using tape, but if you don't wanna use tape, you're always welcome to use glue. And you really don't need much tape at all. So, you're gonna to wanna to tape one end of the string to one side of the plate. And then you want it to be pretty tight. So. And no one's gonna see this white part. So if it looks a little like messy on the back, Again, not the end of the world, it's more the front that matters. So I have green, I also have like a light purple that I'm gonna do. Again, just using tape and putting them basically all over and crossing them to create a web. So when you're creating the web, think of like, what does a spider web look like, you know? Okay. And you can use as much string as you want, but web doesn't have to have that much string. Like, so if you use yarn, you probably would need less. But since my string's a little smaller.
So this is what it looks like so far. I'm gonna add a few more strings to my web. Also, actually looking at the camera is kind of helping me to see what it looks like if I were to hold it up, um, if I were to hang it up on a wall. Okay, so I think I'm going to use like two more strings maybe. pretty content with how my web looks like. So now with the same plate, this is where we're gonna add um, our larger string that hangs down, which I have, let me see. Okay, so again, so I was saying that Dreamcasters, depending on how elaborate you want them to be, it could take a long time. So I actually pre-made um, string with beads because it would take a long time for me to make this. Um, and I don't think you guys wanna watch me do this for too long. So you can add beads to string um, and that could, it can take a decent amount of time depending on the size of the beads, the size of your string. So I have these and then I have large pink yarn and you can add feathers if you'd like. Um, I, and choosing not to use feathers. I'm just using silver beads and pink string. So again, we still have that second plate, but we're gonna leave that on the side. So what we're gonna do now is show you guys. So on the, it doesn't really matter what you consider the top and bottom of your plate. I'm gonna say that this is the bottom of my plate. And again, just start taping. Also, um, another option is glue. However, um, I think tacky glue might be a little bit better if you're gonna be using heavier materials. And you might choose to use tape on the bottom part for like the yarn rather than the web if you have to pick and choose between materials, of course. So I'm just taping the pink part first. It's actually easier to tape um, yarn than, than the tiny string that I was doing before because it's a lot bigger. So I'm gonna do a few more pieces. And I think um, another recommendation is cutting different size string for the bottom part of your dream catcher. One more pink. So I'm used, definitely using a lot more tape than I was before. Okay, so now I'm adding these cool silver beads. It's a lot of taping, <laughs> but what makes this so fun is that there are so many different elements to it. So if you love beading, um, it's a great option to include beading into a craft other than maybe making a bracelet or a necklace. Also something that I probably should have said is that if you want your strings to be longer, to maybe tape 
um, like your pink and silver a little bit lower, which will make sense once I show you the final product because it's gonna look a little bit short. All right, so I have one more silver to add and then we will get to our final product soon. Okay, so this is what it kind of, it looks like right now, hung up. But if you turn it around, you're gonna see all of this taping and it looks a little crazy. And it also might not be that sturdy. So that's why we have this second plate. And this is where glue is probably definitely necessary unless you have another creative way you think you can stick these two plates together. Maybe double-sided tape could work as well. So I'm going to, I'm actually using a, I have glue, but I'm using a paintbrush to get a pretty thick layer. So I'm just painting the edges of my plate with glue. Getting glue all over the place. That's okay, I can always clean it. And definitely um, use a paintbrush that you don't care about because glue is not really the best for paintbrushes. So it is a little tricky where you put the beads and string. I recommend putting the glue like in the spaces between the string and beads. And it's also okay if it's not perfectly glued together, it's as long as it's really covered. And for this, you'll definitely have to let it dry. So, just getting all the edges. And if you want, when you're done, you could always go back and paint uh, over if you want to have a thicker layer of like purple or color. Okay, so now I'm taking my second plate and the white part, I'm gonna press down and match it to the other plate and glue it together. So it kind of pops out on the bottom. But that's fine, it covers everything. So it's, for me, it still has to dry. So I'm gonna let it dry flat um, so that I kind of have to hold it together right now. Um, but once it dries a little bit, it, the two will stay stuck together. And um, yeah, so this is my final product. I'm probably gonna go back and paint over because there are little white spots. And if your plate is uneven, like the circle like mine was, you can even put paint um, in this white part to cover up that little mistake. So yeah, this is my final uh, dream catcher. It's a little big, my whole face can fit in it. So you can always add feathers. You can even write something on your dream catcher, um, like sleep, sleep tight, um, something about dreaming. It also is just a cool decoration. So um, I'm gonna let mine dry flat so I don't mess it up. But yeah, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you relaxed with our meditation and um, you enjoyed making a dream catcher with me. Um, thank you so much. Bye guys.